everybody. Today I'm going to review Black & Decker's DR260 3 8 inch drill driver. Now this is a corded model and it's not high end by any means. It's actually an entry level homeowner drill and recently I've been getting a lot of comments and private emails and messages regarding some lower end or lower cost tools that are still useful. So I actually did some searching online and this one came up because it did get some good written reviews on Amazon and I thought I'd go ahead and test it out for you. Now recently my mother moved into a new townhouse and she was going to borrow one of my drills but she actually went out and bought one at the local Lowe's and it was just an entry level cordless drill. Now you're still going to spend a lot more money on a cordless versus a corded model. And really if you just have minor things to do around the house like maybe hang up some curtains Something like this should still be able to get the job done for you. So next let me show you the different features that they have built into this. And then we're going to see how it actually performs. Here's a closer look at the drill and I want to go over the different features of it now. Now the first thing to point out is the fact that the chuck on this is a 3 8 inch chuck. And what that means is the maximum size diameter shaft on a drill bit, which this is a quarter inch, it can go up to 3 8 of an inch. So it can go a little bit larger than this but something like a 7 16th self-feeding wood bit is just too large to fit in the end of there. You would need to upgrade to a half inch chuck drill if you're going to be using the larger bits. Now the absolute biggest negative of this drill as far as I can see is the fact that it does not have a ratcheting chuck. And what I want to show you is the difference between the non-ratcheting and then a ratcheting chuck like you'll find on many cordless and corded drills. So this being a much higher end unit, but the idea is to think about how this chuck is going to react versus this one. So in order to actually tighten a drill bit down in the Black & Decker, the first thing you want to do is unplug it so you don't accidentally hit the trigger, cut it on, and then hurt yourself. But the way you'll do this with no tools is you'll hold this back collar with one hand, and then you'll take your other hand and then twist this. Now you can see when you do this, it's actually going to be pushing this against your thumb and your forefinger. It's very hard to get that tight and really with just minimal use this is going to loosen up on you. The only way around that is to use a pair of pliers like these channel locks. We'll lock it down. I'm not going to put a ton of force on it, but now it's enabling me to turn that much tighter. And it's so tight in fact, now I cannot break it free by hand. I must use those same pliers in order to hold the motor still so I can break the chuck free. Now this really is just one more step than you normally will need to take, but do keep in mind that this is 30 bucks versus a couple hundred for this drill. So looking at a ratcheting chuck on a drill, what we'll do is just go ahead, spin that same bit down in this one. Now that it's nice and tight, I can go ahead with one hand and then grab onto the chuck and just listen for the ratcheting sound. Now it's getting extremely tight and the motor doesn't need anything to hold it still while I turn this. Now when I also want to break that free, I can grab onto the chuck exactly the same way, twist it, it's going to pop free and I can remove the bit. The drill does have a variable speed trigger and the way you control the speed of the drill bit and the motor is simply by how hard you press in on this button. So when we barely press in on it, you can see the chuck would move very slowly and that would be best for drilling into metal. But if you want to drill something very fast, just press in on this all the way and it's going to go to full speed very quickly. Now if you notice when I let off the trigger it had to slow itself down. It does not have an electric brake that's going to automatically stop that chuck. So if you do have loose fitting clothes or maybe your hair hanging down, it could get caught around the drill bit and even if you do release the trigger, it's still going to continue to move. So just keep that in mind when you use a drill, don't have anything loose hanging around the end of it. Now I also want to point out to change directions, they have a simple switch right here on top of the grip. It's going to move left to right. When it's one direction, watch the chuck, it's going to spin in reverse, we press it the other direction, it's going to spin to tighten it. So that's very easy to change directions, there's nothing you need to do other than press that button left to right. On the top of the drill they also have a bubble level pre-installed in the housing. So you can see if we move this up and down the bubble is going to move around and then when we do get the drill bit perfectly level that's going to be centered in between the two marks. Now for some drilling tests, what I'm actually going to do is drill directly into a 2x4 which is going to be the most common wood you're ever going to find behind the drywall in your house. Now I'm not going to layer this with drywall because for a drill bit to pop through drywall it takes absolutely no effort at all. 
But looking at the power of this as well as the speed, I do want you to keep in mind how much it can actually drill into here and to see if it's going to have any problems or not. So what I'll do is drill three different holes using three different kinds of drill bits and you'll see the performance it's going to give you. The first one's just going to be a small one where let's say you want to put a pilot hole in a wall to put an anchor in to maybe hang a mirror or something. This is the size and type of drill bit you would use. So that was no problem at all and if you notice I had to keep pulling the drill bit out to eject the actual wood shavings which is very typical with any drill. So that's what you'll need to do also. Don't just shove it in there the entire way because it will jam up because those chips cannot eject. Now I'm going to use a self-feeding wood bit. Now this is something you would use if you want to drill a hole directly through a stud or maybe put in a much larger anchor. This is probably a bigger size drill bit than most people are ever going to use with this, but we're going to be testing the power of it now. And this is going to be in a bare piece of wood. I'm not going to use that first hole that I drilled. I'm going to drill another hole directly underneath of it. So you can see that popped all the way through the 2x4 and it didn't even slow down. Now finally for the last hole I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch spade bit. So this is going to make a lot of chips and it's going to give us a perfect hole right through the center of here. And it also popped a hole directly long ways through the 2x4 and the only time it slowed down is when the wood chips were built up in there. I had to eject those, press it back in and it went the rest of the way through. And now for an extreme test I have a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw which was the biggest size I had on hand that would fit in this 3 8 inch chuck and I'm going to pop a hole in a 2x6. Now in my opinion this is way too big of a hole for this tiny drill but we're going to go ahead and see if it will do it. Yep, pop the hole right through it and uh, really we just pop that right out of there, put it back on the bit and we can keep drilling. So now you've seen Black & Decker's DR260 for yourself. And really the main thing that I want to stress is the fact that you want to make sure the bits are in here nice and tight so they don't fall out. If you just try to tighten it up by hand, most people are not going to have the strength to not only hold the motor still, but also tighten that chuck up. And you really do need to use preferably a strap wrench, but if you don't have one, then you can just use a simple pair of pliers. Just remember what I said about clamping down on it. If you squeeze too hard, you could damage that, and because that would be abuse, they're not going to cover that with their warranty. Now if this does break on you in the first two years, Black & Decker does have a warranty on it, so they should fix that for you. And I do want to point out the fact that this is an entry level homeowner drill, and really it should not be used by anybody on a daily basis. This is a once in a while tool when you really want to maybe drill some holes or drive some screws and you don't want to do that by hand. This is going to get the job done for you, but do keep in mind its limitations. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank you.